what else was I going to, I had to share the screen on something else because it had to do with, oh, um, yeah, it had to do with the detainment during the, uh, no, so I, I, I brought that up. Okay, yeah, I, I, I should have been closing the windows so that I don't have to go through my notes. My, my, my Twitter feed has turned into my notes for discourse. Let's just go, let's go to, um, so what's going on with Tara Lich and um, Pat King. Pat King, by the way, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say bad things about Pat King for the sake of it. And I'm not going to say bad things about Pat King, period. Because I don't know enough about Pat King to say bad things about him. My introduction to Pat King came this summer when I was in New Brunswick on the road trip. And there was that viral video. People were freaking emailing me left, right, and center, messaging me, de- texting me, DMing me. Pat, King, this, this guy from Alberta, Pat King, De- Red Deer, Alberta, ended COVID. He ended COVID. They're pulling back the measures. He solved the COVID riddle. He won his case. He subpoenaed the crown. They declined the subpoena. And it's over. COVID's over. And I'm not a cynic, but I'm a cynic. And I'm a reasonably intelligent and, and, and cynical cynic. Like, yeah, th- that doesn't make sense. None of that makes sense. So I went to see the story. I watched the Stu Peters show where he said he ended all of it. He won his court case. He, he, he cornered the crown. It's over. He solved the problem. Everyone across the world should do exactly what Pat King was doing. Subpoena the crown, subpoena the health minister. And I, and I, I looked into it very briefly because you, know, you can only deal with the information you have at the time. Uh, can't fathom everyone because he doesn't. And I said, now the story doesn't make sense. I looked into saying, first of all, I don't think he even won his case. I think I don't even think he succeeded on his subpoena. In fact, I believe his subpoena was quashed because it was invalidly issued. In fact, I don't think he even won on his case because it was suspended and postponed and whatever. And then sure enough, he went on another podcast where the guy, I, I messaged him privately and I said, you did a good job doing it politely and respectfully. Basically got Pat King to admit, I lost my case. I had to pay my ticket. My subpoena was quashed. And they're not lifting the measures in Alberta. And then I started taking shit from, from his supporters who said, Viva, why would you crush the inspiration? He's out there inspiring. It's like, I don't need inspiration. I need truth. I don't need inspiration. I need truth and I need accuracy. And what I got from that was neither truth nor accuracy. I'm not saying it was a lie. I'm just saying he misunderstood what happened because I believe he did. I believe Stu Peters Maybe he knew better. Maybe he didn't. Ran with it because it was just so good. And it was so optimistic and so uplifting. But it was wrong. I don't need inspiration. I just need the truth and accuracy. And when I started calling it out, I started getting called. You know, I started feeling flack. That was my intro to Pat King. Then I found out he's involved with the with the protest, and he's had some. He said some unfavorable things. I don't like any discussion about pure blood. I know people do it in the chat for fun. Hey, oh, Viva, Viva got vax. He's not. He talks to me about pure blood. I, I'm not going to respond to you. I'm not going to block you. You can express your thoughts, but I think that's an idiotic dis- discussion. It's idiotic discourse. And I and I actually think it it's arguably even conceivably planted discourse because nobody on the conservative right who's for freedom of choice is going to refer to anyone who chose to get vaccinated as unpure blood. Nobody. So that's what I think. He's associated with this protest. They were arrested last week. We all saw it. T- Tamara Lich, Friday night a very peaceful pr- uh, arrest, Pat King. And apparently their bail, oh, sorry. So their bail was uh, postponed. Tamara Lynch's decision on her bail, because I think they had the hearing over the weekend, the decision was postponed until Tuesday. She was arrested Friday on what was, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, at worst mischief charges, at worst felony mischief. Which, at worst, Zot is live, by the way. I just got the notification. If anyone wants to go check out Zot. I'm hearing kids not behaving upstairs. Um, She was arrested on what is, at worst, felony mischief. And that's that's a high burden. She was arrested Friday night. Ordinarily, you would be charged, detained within, say, a few hours, maybe 12 hours. Her bail hearing was either held or postponed, but either way, the judgment on her bail hearing was postponed until this morning. So she's been in jail Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, four days on mischief, even if you want to deem it to be felony mischief. And the judge today said, not granting you bail, 
for whatever the reason. Let me just see this here. Just getting here might be known. Couldn't post last message with true dose spelled correctly. <laughs> it's interesting. Susan added it again. Well, it depends how you spelt it and what avatars you put in it. I find the intellectual intelligentsia university is very quiet about all that. Am I wrong? No, well, there's a lefty who are contesting the Emergencies Act, so there's that. Is there any update on Mike Anderson, also known as Pissed Off Trucker on TikTok? He's been a guest. I'll check because I know that I saw him. I, 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 I interviewed him, I believe. I think I interviewed him at some point. So let me bring it up bigger. Detained on mischief charges because there is a substantial risk you will not abide by an order. Or she could be released on bail, as she should be. And if she breaches that order, then she could be possibly understandably detained. Possibly understandably. I weigh my words on purpose. Because I don't think detainment for mischief charges is possibly conceivably justifiable. But if you say you're released, here are the orders. If you violate them, then we can jail you for contempt, like they did with Pavlovsky, like they did with Arthur Coates, uh, not Arthur Pavlovsky, Pastor Coates, and the other one. Maybe. I still think it was abuse. But at the very least, you can understand that they can't get you on the substance, they get you on the process. Um, and this was a, a quote from the decision. There's a substantial risk you will continue these actions and you will not abide by an order, the judge told Lish. Your recent history in our city satisfies me that your detention is necessary for the safety and protection of the public. So I, I play the intellectual um, honesty game. I think it's offensive obscene, unjustifiable, undemocratic, abusive, and egregious that she's still detained. The only thing I say to myself is, what could she and what could Pat King have possibly done or said that might have justified that decision? Bail hearing, people who are cheering this on saying, yeah, good for you. You are detaining an innocent person. You might think she's guilty, but she is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. So you are detaining a legally innocent person. Yeah. Trudeau spoke about sanctions on Russia for authoritarian policy, yet he's doing the same. I, I posted a tweet to that. It's like, hey, look at this. This is uh, Putin invading the Ukraine. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That's Trudeau dealing with peaceful protesters in Ottawa. You can... Um, oh, crap, it was detainment. You can detain someone for violating a court order. And it's understandable because the underlying court order might be totally innocuous. But if they refuse to adhere to the conditions of their release, okay, fine. Then you get them on the procedure, but not on the substance. But you are detaining a legally innocent person. And people have to understand that. The reasons for which you detain a legally innocent person have to do with the severity of the accusations, the flight risk, or the risk of uh, res what's the word? Re recidivity? Re re repeating the crime. So an egregiously violent accusation, although you're technically presumed innocent. Let's just take the Waukesha driver, for example. Well, there's video of it, beginning to end, including arrest. He's legally innocent, although not innocent in my mind, but I can that's my own bias. Call it what you want. You can arguably detain that individual, despite not being convicted yet, because of the seriousness of the violence of the act. Ma Jelaine Maxwell. You could arguably de justify the detainment because of a flight risk. You know, she's on serious charges. Some will call them violent. Others might not, but they're, 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 sex they're violent. Her she might be a flight risk. Her argument was always that if she were a flight risk, she would have flighted a long time ago and not waited to get arrested. Setting that aside, the violence, the flight risk, or the risk of recidivism, committing it again. Send it adjourned. Good, because I don't want to hear that diary anymore. So I, I just say to myself, what could she possibly have done to justify this order, which I think is shockingly offensive on his face? She could have gotten up before the court, before the judge, she and Pat King, and they have it in their spirit. They have a fighting spirit, like it or not. She could have said, forget you, judge. I'm not going to do a damn thing. You can put whatever conditions you want. I will assure you I am not going to respect them. And then the judge is going to say, well, okay, I have no choice. This is what they did to um, Pavlovsky, to Coates. I think it was more to Coates, to, to, uh, to Pastor Coates than to Pavlovsky. They said, agree not to hold church services. He said, I will not agree to those bail conditions. And they said, I'm sorry then, I can't release you. I think it's abusive. I think it's egregious. I think it's unconstitutional. But I understand the logic. 
Here are the terms of your release, your bail conditions, $5,000 bond, whatever, and undertake not to hold what we are claiming to be unlawful church services. Coates said no, and they held him for, I think it was a long time. I think it was, I think it was over three weeks. I understand it. I disagree with it, but I understand it. If Tamara Lich said, I will not undertake one thing. I will continue corresponding with other protest members. I will continue corresponding with the convoy. I will continue organizing. I will continue encouraging people to come down on Ottawa. If she said that in open court, I could understand it. I might still disagree with it. I might still say, let her go out and let her do that. And then when you bring her back, you have the moral high ground. I could understand. It. Same thing with Pat King. So I don't know what was said. Um, and then, and then that's, and that's, that's all I have to say about that is basically, if that's what she said, I can understand the judge saying, I can't grant you bail. The rationale based on the judge's statements can't understand it. You pose a risk. I can't be assured you won't repeat. Well, then you release the individual, take their passport. If that's what you want to do to make sure she's not a flight risk. Therefore, if she's a recidivist risk, you can get her back and then you can jail her. And you can say, I told you not to, you did it. And other people out there could say it was an abusive ask in the first place, but you did it. And now you're going to go sit in jail unless you undertake not to do it again. That's not what happened from what I understand. Now, uh, Dave Amber, who's the lawyer in Ottawa representing people now, he came out with a piece and he said, basically, look, it's nuanced and yada, yada. Uh, criminal lawyer, I believe it's here, share. And I believe you're seeing this. He says, my piece in the Newsweek on Tamara Lich being, de being denied bail. We'll bring it up. And I think you're seeing this. A leader of Freedom Convoy was denied bail, what it means, what it doesn't. And uh, and he, he has a bit of a nuanced take on this, which I I, I, I agree with the take, but I, I disagree with, I, I understand the take, but I disagree with the underlying point, which is she should have been released and allowed to violate the terms of her release. And then you lock her up. And then you could say, I told her not to do it. And she did it. Not, I fear you're going to do it. Therefore, I'm not giving you bail. Her her new hearing date is March, March 1st or something. I'm detaining you on mischief charges, whereas drug dealers who lie on their bail terms, yeah, I won't deal drugs, I won't commit crimes, so let me go. I think it's I think it's outrageous, but I just want to read a couple of passages. Something many pe something many seem to be missing is the fact that a bail hearing is not a trial. Trial is guilty or not guilty. Fine. The rules of evidence are concrete, beyond a reasonable doubt or not. Bail, on the other hand, is a very different animal. It does not result in the binary decision making found uh, making found in a trial, but rather involves balancing many interests and yada yada. And we, we we talked about it. The court believes that the accused is likely to not attend court if the or if they believe there's substantial likelihood that the person will continue to break the law. Or otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if if their likelihood of breaking the law is mischief charges, uh, yeah, that's not that's not serious enough in my view to to continue to detain them. Uh, or it's not enough to continue justifying denying bail. I will recognize Amber has more meaningful professional experience than me. And if you want to defer to the authority between me and Amber, Amber is the authority. This is my opinion. Uh, and he says, the judge basically said, your counsel, in Tamara Lick's case, the judge detained her on the second and third grounds. You are counseling publicly to continue to, uh, to occupation. The judge said at the hearing, I cannot be reassured that if I release you, you will not reoffend. That's the bottom line. So, so Amber is basically saying she's basically admitting that she's continuing to encourage the allegedly unlawful conduct. And the judge says, I can't be assured that you will not reoffend. My take would have been release her, let her reoffend. And then you can do it. Not right now. I think it's I think it's over the top. But but go read the piece from Amber. You may like it and you may not like it. You may agree with it, you may disagree with it. It's a well thought out and well justified piece. And don't anyone start saying Amber has to pussyfoot around satisfying the courts. And yet Amber has been more ballsy and more courageous than any practicing attorney that I know. And I'm not including myself in that because I'm not practicing anymore. And I don't have to worry about what a judge thinks about me. Amber is frontline offense and frontline defense. And so don't go because you don't like his conclusion here and say he's controlled opposition He's just covering his own ass. If he were covering his own ass, he wouldn't be taking these files. If he were covering his own ass, he would not be appearing on my channel talking about it. If he were covering his own ass, he would not be doing what he's doing now. He has a take on this. It's not an untenable take. I just disagree with it, but it is a justifiable, tenable take.
Um, and that's it. And so uh, my only thing is, you know, did Pat King basically saying, screw you, F you, I won't do what you tell me. You let me out. The second I get out, I'm going to go continue doing this. They might have said that out of defiance. And then the judge might have, you know, been more justified than less justified and saying, well, then no bail for you. If it were me, it's mischief charges. Let them out. If they cause mischief, you're not detaining them because they're causing mischief. You're detaining them because they're breaching the orders of their release. So I don't know that we're going to actually see the vote tonight. Uh, detention was called. Lish is in DT for protection of public. Uh, detention was called DT. What does DT stand for? Anyhow, bottom line. the You know what the funny thing is? This is we didn't need a January 6th to justify the response. This is our January 6th, not because of the violent protests, but because of the government abuse, the prosecutorial abuse, the abuse of law in all of this. Um, this is it's it's over the top, in my view. One of my favorite streamers, Spokens Ken, tweeted your rant yesterday when law tube collides with police scanner chase pot smoking you. It was beautiful. I don't smoke pot, people. Just everybody knows that. I, I don't. I like the way it smells, but I don't do it. I have nothing against it. I'm just actually shocked that people can actually do that and remain functional human beings. My own, <laughs> my own two cents. Senate is done for the day. So can people in the chat tell me, are we not going to get a vote tonight? Not that I'm encouraged because, oh, well, actually, you know what? Guy who, yeah, he's out on bail. The guy who ran over four protesters, he's out on bail. Because he, because he promised not to run over any more people. He signed his bail terms. They said, put up $10,000, undertake not to run over any more people. And he said, yes. Pastor Coates said, no, I will not undertake not to hold church services. Wow, I told my wife this was going to be a short stream. And I, th I think I don't hear kids screaming anymore. My mother died of cancer over the summer. We had to pick someone to travel across provincial borders and sit by her. <sighs> The government has dehumanized people in their inability to be with their loved ones and to mourn the loss of the loved ones. I, th that will enrage me. It will enrage me until the day I die. And I just hope that's 60 years from now and not not sooner. Although this this stress is is it's an it's an un, it's an unbearable amount of stress. It has nothing to do with how hey Viva True North just put an article. The judge for Tamara Lich ran as a liberal, endorsed by Trude. I have no, I have no doubt, I have no doubt about that. These, ju these judges, in the same way that they're incapable of adjudicating on this because of conflicts of interest, in as much as the judges in Washington, you want to you want to adjudicate on an insurrection that threatened democracy, and you want to be the judge in the city in, in which that allegedly occurred, and think you're going to be objective? You're not going to be objective. Putin is only declaring the Emergencies Act on Ukrainian truckers. That looks like me tonight, sir. That's me tonight. I love it. I love unlawful use of my image. No, I'm joking.